Good morning, happy Friday. Welcome back to the channel, The Rock and Metal Guardian. I'm Dane. Today's topic is going to be what makes a band or artist truly amazing? These are, of course, my opinions, and I'm saying you must believe in this. These are just my opinions, and I would very much like for you to share in your comments um, whether you agree or disagree, and what are your qualities that make for a band to be tr or an artist to be truly amazing. All right, so let's get started. These, by the way, are not in any particular order. All right, number one, uh, the band or artist forever changes music. They create something new. They're innovative. They break new ground. They break boundaries. Um, so, for example, Miles Davis and Black Sabbath come to mind for me personally, two um, artist bands. I really like Miles Davis going really deeper and digging his feet in into the electronic jazz uh, which is my favorite era of his music. Uh, and then, of course, Black Sabbath, uh, arguably the first heavy metal album of all time, uh, first doom metal album of all time. It's so inspiring to uh, other bands and future generations of, of rock and metal musicians. All right, next, meaningful lyrics, often cerebral. So some people you listen to, at least I hear this a lot, they talk, they, and these are people who listen mostly to music that has lyrics and they say I'm not a lyrics person I'm not mocking or making fun or calling them out I just don't understand the logic you mostly listen to music that has lyrics but you're not a lyrics person so if someone could explain that to me I'd very much like to know what that means um, anyway so lyrics are great because they may tell a story uh, they may offer um, submit something inspirational, thematically, or it's, it's just something from the heart. Um, and so that's my next um, element. It's um, for a band or artist to truly be amazing, has to come from the heart. Um, and tied to that is the next element is the music, the band, the artist, what they create has to resonate with, with you emotionally. Um, and of course, vocals, the instruments, you name it, production even can do that, right? Um, the next is the music, the artist, the band doesn't overwhelm you with cliches, tropes, music stereotypes. Now we know that rock music is known and part of what makes it fun and, and inviting and alluring is are the cliches. But if you're overwhelmed and beaten over the head by them, then it gets old and annoying, and, and I'm out for me personally. So, for example, I really like the song by Kiss on the Killers album, no, Nowhere to Run. And part of the lyrics go, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Paul is singing at his best in the song, as, as he does with a lot of his song, songs. I love Paul Stanley's voice. Um, but that's not the point. The point is, um, I remember recently being on YouTube and looking at a music video of some new, relatively new band, I can't remember the name of it, it's about six, I think six months ago, and right off the bat, No Place to Run, No Place to Hide are in their lyrics. I'm like, ugh, uh, so cliched. It, it's been done to death, we've seen this movie before. Uh, now, sometimes cliches can be fun and good, like for example, ACDC, ACDC song, uh, Beating Around the Bush. That's a cliche, that song title, but it works, it's fun, it's a cool song. Um, the next one is huge for me personally, and that is uh, artists don't play to the gallery. And I'm quoting David Bowie here. And what he meant by that is that the artists or musicians, they don't create music to solely please the fans. Art is a personal endeavor. Now, this is a slippery slope because you need that balance. On one hand, you want to meet your fans' expectations but in the same time, you want to be true to yourself. So it is a balance, it is a slippery slope. So for example, the album Clockwork Angels by Rush. It's an album I both like and hate at the same time because there are, there are songs on it that meet my expectations. Maybe half of the songs or uh, a third of them. Anyway, and there are songs uh, that are eh. But for Rush, that's... They, they like these songs. They created them. They, there's something about them for them personally that, you know, they invested in. And, 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 that, and 
And that's what art is really about. It's the priority for an artist is to please oneself. oneself. And so I get that. So I'm not knocking Rush because I don't like half or more of the songs in Clockwork Angels or I, I don't only like a third of them. I get it. Um, so David Bowie, if you're interested in seeing uh, what he has to say about not playing to the gallery, go on YouTube, click in David Bowie, play to the gallery. It's about a minute and a half, minute 39 seconds. It's, very, it's a very inspiring um, video to watch. Um, all right, so that's huge for me. Um, so last thing I'll say about not playing to the gallery, you don't want to do that, um, is uh, you want to leave a resonating mark upon your fans. You want to inspire them. That is a must, okay? Um, you want to meet expectations, but you don't want the same thing over and over, is what Bowie is saying. Uh, a great example of a band who starts doing the same thing over and over becomes very formulaic and it works for them um, for most people is ACDC once you get to all the albums post back in black they're extremely formulaic we see, we've heard this album before for them it still works for me I'm out after flick of the switch um, what, I like the razor's edge song um, thunderstruck but, but everything post flick of the switch in excluding that one song um thunderstruck i i'm out uh let's play ball come on you, you know you were, you did that song because you wanted a radio anthem a sports anthem song so yeah all right um let's see what else we got here got a bunch of stuff left um oh this one is huge for me the band or artist has seven or more great albums. Not mediocre, not average, not good, very good, great, or masterpiece, or legendary. All right, so that's a very big stick, stickler with me. Uh, next, let's talk about chemistry and synergy. You need both. Chemistry among band members. What I mean by that is there's a dynamic between the members. They work well together. Their mind and personalities work Together, they're on the same page towards their vision. Next, synergy among band members. That's a bit different. That is the interdependence of the band members, yet still working towards the same vision. Uh, sorry, I got up in your face like that. Uh, anyway, uh, so chemistry and synergy are very important. Uh, artistic integrity is also huge. So it's, the priority is about the music, and this ties into what Bowie was saying about not playing to the gallery. Um, music is the priority. It's not about money. It's not about chasing women. It's not about fame. It's not about hit singles. It's not about merchandising. It's not about gimmicks. In other words, these are not your priorities. Okay. Um, you're, you're being true to yourself. It's about the art that you're creating for yourself, first and foremost, as I said, and second, for your fans. Um, now, while gimmicks can be cool, like Kiss with the makeup and Slipknot with the uh, masks, that should not be the priority. Okay. Um, the band next has to be great live. Going to see them live, and if they do live material on vinyl, CD, whatever, um, has to be quality product. Okay. Frisson, or Frisian, I'm not sure how you pronounce this, is a word I discovered a couple weeks ago, and that is that goosebumply feeling you get when you listen to something. Um, uh, that feeling of excitement, that thrill, whether it's something old that you've always listened to or something new. Um, next is emotion. And I said earlier, uh, this is tied to that, playing from the heart. Um, take, for example, Alex Lifeson on La Via Strangetto on Exit Stage Left and Live in YYZ, the last song in both of those respective releases, where at the, around the three minute mark, um, Lifeson's solo, it's it sounds, it's, it's rife with emotion, um, it's, his guitar is crying, it's so moving, it's so inspiring um, for me personally, things like that. So there's your example. Um, next is the band is hardworking. And I'm going to use Rush. Rush as another example. All three members of the band uh, got their hard work, uh, I'm sorry, they got their work, strong work ethic from their parents. So for example, Neil Peart got a strong work ethic from his dad. He worked with his dad because his dad owned or worked at a agricultural farming warehouse for the parts for farm uh, equipment. Um, Alex Lifeson's parents and grandparents were 
from uh, Serbian, uh, sorry, they were Serbian immigrants, and so he got a strong sense of work uh, from them. While he um, wasn't into, you know, finishing high school, uh, he put his hard work and energy, blood, sweat, and tears into his music. And because of that, he's a success story. Not everyone has to graduate from school or college to be a success. Um, and this, now, while, I, while I'm saying that, I'm not saying school isn't important. I, as a teacher, I'm a big believer in staying in school. But that, what I'm saying is there are some examples of people. There are not many of people who don't finish school and they're huge success stories. And Alex is one of them. Uh, Getty Lee's uh, parents and grandparents, immigrants from Poland, I believe. And they taught him that strong work ethic as well. All right, so that's important. Um, tied to that, I should say, is that if you have a strong work ethic, um, you're not painting things by numbers and you're not phoning it in like some bands do um, or artists. Um, and tied to hard work is even late in your career, you're still fighting entropy. And what I mean by that is you're doing your best, even though you've been around as an artist or musician for 30, 40, even 50 years or more, and you want to put out a quality album. And that's difficult because I, it's my theory that if you look at a band's long career, if they have a long career, starting with maybe the 70s, they're still around today, or recently retired, and they have 18, 19, 20 or more albums, and if you look at the, the history, the, the, it's usually the front end half that's really their strongest material. But you do have bands once in a while that some of the back end of their catalog and discography is quite good. Um, so you're doing your best to fight entropy. Um, the next one is a big one with me as well, and that is you like an artist or band's music the first time you hear it on the first listen. Now I'm saying that's a must, absolutely not, because a lot of music I love and are endearing to me is not something I liked on first listen. I would say probably 70% or more of the music that I do love that's so endearing to me, whether it's old or new or recent, is because I gravitated to it immediately. I loved it on first listen, it, you know, goosebumps, right? Or something near to that. Um, so, it, so it has to be said though, at what point do you draw the line between how much time you dedicate to giving something a chance? Is it three lessons, four, five? For me personally, I would say in between, I would say either four or five and no more. Um, although sometimes I still go back and listen to something, even I'll listen to more than that. So, and, and nope, still don't like it. Um, it's just the way it is. Um, so, now I'm not saying that you must have this immediate, grat it must be an immediate gratification when it comes, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying the great artists, great bands are out there, are the ones you listen to it for the first time, it's like, wow, okay? Now, the other end of the spectrum is that, you know, years later, it's, it still stands the test of time. And that's my last element or quality that makes a, an artist or a band truly amazing. That you listen to something, say, from 30 years ago, and it's still exciting, it's still thrilling, it still moves you, it still inspires you. Okay, so you like the music right off the bat or not. There's that sort of balance. You have to give something a second chance or a third or fourth or fifth chance. Um, but the stronger music for me is the stuff that invited me in and I was hooked. Okay. Um, and again, as I'll repeat, has to stand the test of time. All right. Please post your comments. I'd love to hear from you. That's one of the main reasons I'm doing this channel is I want to share my love of music with other people and I want to hear from them. I want, them to share, I want you to share with me what you believe are the things that makes an artist or a band truly great. Have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.